Hi, my name is Brian. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a spider injector on a V8 engine. This is a 98 Chevy Suburban, half ton, four wheel drive. So a diamond dozen where I live. There's a lot of them. Um, so what we're going to do, we got codes P0172 and P0175, uh, which means lean bank one and lean bank two. So we're going to get in this thing and uh, give it a new creature of darkness, new uh, spider injector. First thing you want to do is undo your little uh, nut here and just rock it forward, pull it forward and pull it out, pull off the elbow, unbuckle your air filter box, take this guy off and set him aside, unbuckle your intake air temperature sensor and your mass airflow sensor and then just remove it as a unit. We'll set it aside under the little step thing for now. Um, looks like they need to have the throttle body clean too. Next thing you want to do is disconnect your cables and feed them through. Um, also, not just for this video, but just for room to work and breathe and whatever, I'm going to remove the AC compressor, so I'm going to go ahead and unbuckle them. There's a plug on the back side down here, there's one here, and then there's also one for the clutch. What I like to do is I'll take a, just a regular flathead screwdriver, like here's a really cheap 99 cent one and I'll just uh, lift it or twist it to get that first buckle to let go and once it's clear I go to the other side and then pull it. I like to keep the plugs in great shape but they don't always want to survive the ordeal. Plastic can get really brittle. It's not one of my favorite materials. Looks like that one's split or something. So it's going to give me extra hassle but it's no match for me. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the belt. Um, to take off the belt on this, you've got just a little keyway on the idler that's the 3 8 square, just like your ratchet is. So you just pull that down, and this will unstring the belt from the AC compressor, and we'll just lay it below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the lines intact, but I'm going to pull the four bolts that hold the compressor down. You see a flex line here. I'm going to unbuckle it from here, and get another flux line there, and uh, what I'll do is I'll take the whole compressor and I'll put it in the air filter box. Once it's in the air filter box, I'll be able to show you more clearly how this is done, and it'll give me a little more room to work. Another thing you want to do is depressurize the system. I'm going to have to take you out of the tripod. Be prepared to puke from motion sickness. There's this little cap here, it's a little Schrader type valve, so I'll take the cap off, I'll set it next to that little uh, nut that holds the air filter box on, and you can depress the middle part of that and let it squirt out and the gas will evaporate and get out of the way and whatnot. Um, but you got to do that in order to uh, depressurize the system so that it won't go everywhere. And then you can pull these lines off and then also pull where they're secured further back here. I'll show that to you here in just a minute. So I'll pull the compressor, lay it aside, and go from there. This is just a 13 millimeter. There's four of them. I like to do it evenly. I do these two together. You don't want it to twist because the O-ring in there will split. Then your compressor will leak. The whole thing we're doing here is to have it not leak. Kind of sick fellow tries to make the AC. See, it's trying to poach the bracket here, but it's not having it. trouble with my socket, I found that the one that I warrantied it had a tag that said 13 millimeter, but the socket was 14, so son of a gun. So you look on the back side, once you get this off you can unplug this one. I just gotta be careful with it. You can see I put the bolts in this in the tray. So I'll use your air filter box as a handy thing. But uh, anyway, next thing you want to do is you want to take your same screwdriver and um, 
pull this forward. I'm gonna stick a rubber coated pair of pliers in that. Get a little slack in two places. And then I take this uh, cable here for the cruise control and just pop it forward. And then you can pop these out. Somebody's gonna ask, where's Spanky? She's sick, she's puking her guts out. I didn't wanna get Spanky vomit all in the intake system. So uh, she's taking a little breather. So you bring this back all the way around. Get rid of your pliers now because you don't need those in there. You don't want to bend the throttle butterfly. Bring this to the underneath position. Draw it out and just let that back. And then you can leave them clipped into here. I'd actually recommend that so you don't break these. They tend to get a little bit fragile over time. You guys know what a butterfly gun is? Butterfly gun's this little critter here, and uh, it's pretty effective. I'll show you what I use it for. It's best not to use a wobble extension, but we're going to do it just because it's close by and I don't like to do it. But uh, really efficient, really fast, and they're not as loud as the air ratchet. So just reach under there. It just really ganks stuff out fast. So we'll do that. So there's that one, and then we'll go over the top. It's really good for areas um, that you have a lot of room. So we'll take our cables and we'll lay them aside. Uh, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and unplug the power brake booster. You hear the vacuum release. It reminds me of an elephant joke. Guy's feeding an elephant, and the elephant's got a really skinny, skinny trunk, and it's not being real cooperative to eat the peanuts, but he wants to make friends with the elephant. So he keeps pushing the pushing the peanuts into the elephant's mouth, you know, lift, lift up the trunk. And this trunk's so skinny, you can't even see the holes, you know, for the opening at the end. He just keeps feeding the peanuts to the elephant. He says, you like those? You want some more? And the elephant opens its mouth and says, He says, oh, a few. <laughs> Think about it. It's feeding the back of the elephant. All right, so set these nuts aside and start to wiggle this a little bit. Reminds me of a 90s song. Wiggle it just a little bit and pull your PCV valve out, turn it up. Uh, start unplugging for your wire harness. Got a little sensor down the side of the motor. We'll start undoing the throttle body position sensor, or throttle position sensor, excuse me, on the throttle body. Idle air control motor, EGR valve, coolant temperature sensor, you name it. We'll just start unplugging everything. And then we're going to get some WD-40 and we're going to spray that. We're going to be uh, only removing the upper manifold so you don't have to do anything with the coolant. Uh, I hate draining it. I'm not going to. You can poach around this a little bit. I will have to unbolt this top nut on the water outlet. Is that 15? Do so much on imports I expect to to be consistent, but American manufacturers, they're not into that. Uh, kind of Toyota, you can do anything you want with a 17 millimeter, 12, and a 10, 14. That's about all you use of them. And with these, you got 9 sixteenths and 13, you know, 9 sixteenths and 14 are real close. Same thing, you know, 13 and a half are equivalent. You know, you can pretty much always use those interchangeably. Alright. We got this harness all unstrung. So we're going to need to fish this one. This comes from vacuum supply and goes in here for the, the PCV kind of interchange thing. Pop that off slowly. Try to twist it back and forth and get the rubber to let go. And then once it does, just kind of work it off slow, just nice even pressure. 
so you don't tear the rubber or break the plastic nipple. Both of those materials are just, yeah, at least they made them pretty good back then. All right, so at this point we're going to disconnect uh, this valve here and uh, see if we can fold that back over. So just remember how all of these go. I try to have them stick up because that way if they're stuck, you know those things you don't want stuck up. Women, you know, men, a lot of things you just don't want to stick up. With these you want stuff to stick up because it reminds you, hey, I got to be plugged in so you can't forget it. Oftentimes you get this many things where you're disconnecting 50 different things. It's easy to forget one out of, you know, and wind up with a score of 48 or 49 out of 50 and you think that's okay. But the car isn't going to run very good if you do it. So unbuckle the uh, master plug on here. Pull out the little retainer. And I'm just getting underneath the tab and I'm not pulling it hard. I'm just getting it to let go just a little bit. And then I lift and then go to the other side. And then lift it just a little bit. Then work it back and forth. These are the tabs that I'm talking about. They even have things where you can put a screwdriver in this way and rock them back just slightly. But those tend to give me trouble. I have conflicts with them, so I just like to lift it directly. Alright, so we've about got everything off here. So then we're going to start scouting out our plan for pulling this upper manifold set. Now what's funny about this whole thing is the gasket for this part here um, costs, you know, for the whole intake manifold thing is like $26.99. To do just that little gasket is like $23.99. It's $3 different. Okay. And I had to order it in so I just did the one. So hopefully you can see this okay. I'm trying to do it in the tripod. It just seems far away. Um, these lines here for the fuel injection, they're secured at the back. I'm going to go ahead and pull those next. There's no way I can film that, you know, effectively. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Go ahead and unplug your ignition coil and your ignition control module on the left side here. And uh, probably undo the coil wire to the cap. Get that up and out of the way. Unplug your alternator voltage regulator back here. Get my screwdriver in there and get that out. And then uh, this one I'm probably just going to leave down in there. I am going to undo this PCV hose. And then I think I'll probably leave the crank sensor in, like I said. And then just push this out from under. It's nice to have a lot of room to be able to work with, but at the same time, you know, it's like how much stuff you're going to pull off. Scares the crap out of me every time I pull these out. It's your power brake booster hose and set it aside. There's just some real crap plastic used in this. A lot of Chevy enthusiasts were really disappointed when they saw all the plastic on this model. So anyway, next thing I'm going to do is get those uh, fuel lines undone from the back side here and then uh, pull it up. Alright, you see I lit up the back, that's where we're going. Um, on the back of this fuel rail system, uh, both of the nuts that are back there, you can see you've got your two lines here and here. Let's see if we can get you around the thing. I go from underneath here and I crack them this way. And uh, after that, then you spin them down. You can see that the uh, nuts are just down in there. And they're loose. And then in between the two lines, you can't really see it, but there's a hole here for a bracket. There's a little 10 millimeter bolt that uh, resides down in there. And it's got that green Gorilla Piss uh, Loctite on it. So loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, and it'll come up. So once you've done that, you can pull the rail or just pull it as a unit. It's free. I'm going to pull the whole unit out and then pull it out of it later. Um, so basically we're free to go to pull the rest of the manifold up now. We're just doing the upper intake manifold. I don't have to do the lower. So just go around and hit all these tens. Now this little bracket here that's in the way, you can pull and pull and pull and eventually it'll come off. But what makes that a whole lot easier is just take a little screwdriver and then bend it up on each side like that. 
and then once they're bent up they come up a lot easier if you can leave the screwdriver in there on one side favor the one side or just bend it up completely and smack it on the floor with a hammer later I gotta use two hands but you get the idea spin one of these tabs up it'll come right out a lot like doing a deer. <laughs> it's like gutting an elk or gutting a deer. Have layers and layers and layers. You get down through it and then you get paid or you get meat or something good comes of it. Seems like a long journey in the meantime. So these two that are on the either side of this valve are going to be different. So you can set them in the air filter box away from your magnetic dish. Come on little light, hang in there. I like to be a little bit gentle. These butterfly guns can just rip stuff out and damage the threads at the end of it. Some mechanics won't use them, but if you have some finesse, they can really help you with your flat rate. And they're also adjustable, so you don't have to have it set to 8 all of the time. It's like this one got dropped on the floor. Let's see. Guide that down in there. But, you know, everybody has their own way to walk. Everybody has their own way of speaking. They have their own rhetoric, their choice of words. And uh, I'm glad they do. That's why I'm a real advocate of freedom. You get a lot of different ways of doing something. And it's nice to have engineering be the same so that things can interchange and function properly. But uh, we wouldn't have as many ways to skin a cat, so to say, if it weren't for people having the privilege opportunity to try different things. And what I like about that there's always room for improvement you know I feel that way about myself and that's probably why I like people to have freedom as much as I like my freedom because if you don't ha if it's not your idea it's a lot harder to adopt or if you don't feel like you were taught something that you want to choose to go with then maybe you won't do it you know when people live because they're you know live in such a way that they only do what's expected and no more no less you know it's like that's not living there's no excitement in that <laughs> you might have everything right you might be perfectly safe you might uh, have things very predictable and that's comforting to one side of human nature because we are such creatures of habit but if you don't have freedom or if you don't explore then I think life has lost a lot of its meaning. You're, you're no different than a chicken or a rabbit or something else. Everything handed to them and you sit around, fulfill your purpose, and then die. I mean, that might be okay for farm animals, but it makes people horribly unsatisfied. And bit, it just messes with people. It's not healthy for humans to be that way. All right, let's see. Looks like I've got most everything. As far as I can tell, we're about ready to start wiggling this thing free. You can see that my ignition stuff is all just there. It's on an aluminum bracket. It's a nice place to lean this time of year. I've got one more on this side. Now this little vacuum uh, pot, I don't know what you'd call this, this port, vacuum port. You can just pull up and set it aside. Had I done that earlier, I'd have noticed that and not missed it. On similar models, the six cylinder 3.8 liter and three fours and stuff, I started putting the PCV valve down inside of there instead of having it come clear out around. Kind of an interesting little tidbit. Just give it a little wiggle. And then we'll go ahead and uh, 
take these lines off. And these lines have to come off because we have to push the injector down through and pull this off the injector because the injector is down inside in a bracket. So now that everything is free and loose, it'd be a good time to start working on that. If you got some spray silicone or something, we'll spray it around there. If you're lucky, it will seep into the o-ring and help lubricate it and get it to come off. Wires can be such a pain sometimes. They won't come, won't come, and then just all of a sudden they come. Must be female. I'm leaving this all in and showing the struggle so you don't feel bad when you struggle because as I said, sometimes it is. We'll take that and we'll set that on the side of our other side of our air box. And now, I need to get this to come up. I'm holding this down CPR style and uh, prying up on the other. So you get that to come apart. Pull your radiator hose up. Notice I didn't drain any coolant. It's easier if you do, but if not, you can pull it up on the right side. I just don't like bleeding all the coolant out of the system and cleaning up the antifreeze mess. I'm not a huge fan of coolant in general. <laughs> it's just gross. So we'll set that aside. And there is our creature of darkness. You can see the brackets loose. Um, you got these little pinch tabs on this. You just pinch them and pull them, pinch them and pull them. Now I want you to notice something. These are actually done wrong, or there's a new way that you do it. For one, this is just a tube going in, it's just kind of squirting gas. There's no tube on the fuel pressure regulator. I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we got a metal bracket that's holding our thing, our uh, injector body, and the injection's all up in here. And you've got these tubes that go down to the cylinders. Now, the outside ones go to the outside or end cylinders you know see this is the very end of it it goes to the very end here um, that's all fine and good the way we want to do these is we want the end ones to be underneath and we want these ones to go over so it would be like this say I were to pull that one out and right now this is SCPI or I don't know what S stands for CPI central port injection but we want the, these uh, outer ones to go under, outer, under. So that's how that works. We pull all of these out of there. But just wanted to point that out. There's a new way of doing this that's a better way so that things don't get kinked and crack over time as that cracks. Because it's old. Plastic, you say plastic lasts forever, it never breaks down, it'll be here for eternity. Dude, it gets brittle as heck and falls apart as good as anything else I've ever seen. So you want to be careful as you're pulling these out that you don't drop the plastic in there and get it stuck in a valve and have a valve stuck open or some ornery sucker thing like that. But uh, you want to pull all the injectors out first. Man, it just snaps. Just touch it, it snaps. It's ugly. Man, it's burning so rich. You can just see carbon trace area. It's wet on the back side. You can tell something was leaking back here. Probably had a cracked line or something. But like I say, it was just running too rich. So, as far as this goes, you can unbolt it from down here. Uh, there's a bolt on each side, and the torques are hard to get to. But, you know, forget about it. The better thing to do is to get into your bracket and just kind of twist it. Twist, pry, you know, pop it free. Notice we got the cylinders all listed on the outside here. But basically if you have your fuel lines on the right side as you're looking at it, you know, left as far as automotive talk if you're sitting in the vehicle. Oh, come on, let go. Stop fighting me, creature of darkness. Yeah, we're just going to go back and forth all day because I got a camera in my eye. I'll pull a camera back in the tripod and wrestle it from there. This video is going to be so long. 
everybody's going to be like, what's with the rant on freedom? What the hell? So these twist in their respective ports. You can see, you make them go lengthwise, and you want to make sure to do this on the new one as you put it in. Looks like I got a whole renegade still stuck in there. Let go, dang it. That's that one I went to barely squeeze it and it just popped. It just broke right off. Oh, what an ornery little sucker. Dude, if I saw this on the sidewalk, I'd walk around it. If I found it in my basement, I would spray it with something to kill it. <laughs> you can see where this broke off. The tabs are still holding it in, but they haven't fallen in. You can see one of the tabs in the back corner there, the end cylinder. So what I'm going to use is a dental tool like this, and it's going to take two hands, and I'll po poke it with this end of the dental tool to release one end, lean it, and then do the other okay, side. Okay, so we are clear. All those little black plastic tabs are accounted for. And you see I've got this laid out like this with the legs two in the back, two in the front, kind of like a real spider. That's how they got their name, eight-legged creature of darkness. Can't say that enough. It's just kind of fun. Um, this design failed. You see the... Little end of the they're kind of spring low when they get pressure in each of these, uh, they'd go off. Oh man, spilling gas everywhere. That go kill some weeds on the driveway. If we're going to spill gas, we'll put it to use. Uh, but anyway, this is how we're going to get the new one set up before it goes in. I'll show you in a second. So here's how the new one comes right out of the box. You go to the dealer and they give you a great big box. You pull this out and you're like, how is that ever going to fit in there? This is how. Isn't that pretty? Let's leave those orange tabs in for now, um, but uh, it looks more like a V-shaped squid than a spider injector, so we're going to help it along. Um, I take my spray silicone because I'm obsessed with O-rings not leaking and everything going right. I spray it in there, and as soon as those start to move a little bit, as soon as they burp or break free, um, it'll lubricate and you'll feel that they go a lot easier. I want it to be happy and comfortable. You ever taken an angry, scared cow to slaughter versus one that's calm and chillaxed? You want to do it. You want to slaughter a calm cow. <laughs> Ask Temple Grand, and she'll tell you all about it. So what we have here is this is multi-port fuel injected. The injectors are just real little, and they're here. Instead of injecting it up in here, it injects it locally. You get a lot better uh, fuel atomization. These little cap things actually stay on there. Uh, don't take them off. So as I said, now we've got this looking more like a spider and uh, want to do this when it's warm. Put it under a heat lamp or a work light if it's cold so that these don't kink. Uh, kinking is bad. So it's going to go in like this. We're going to do the end ones first and they're going to go in and they're the ones that are most likely to kink because they go right at that end. And then the other ones are going to go around underneath, or around over actually, I'm sorry, around over and in. Like I say, make sure that they're warm, put them under a heat lamp or something if you need to. Um, and uh, here we go. So when you go to put these in, um, you don't really have O-rings here, everything's just kind of open in the intake. I'm going to spray these with this spray silicone also. Man, this, this switch to Liquid Wrench brand from Pyroil. And it sucks. It just puts way, 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 way too much out. It's really annoying. So the way that these go in, these end ones go in first. And notice that I'm not putting it in the bracket first. That's intentional. So I take that, stick it in there, and I'll get it to where it's got the lines in the bracket, but it goes in the bracket kind of last. So this one goes underneath to the outside on the end. This one, I take the end one, goes underneath into the last one on the block. Click that in, twist this, get it to click, get it to click, and then these ones go out over the top and in. And you got to kind of position them, and this is why, because you got extra bulk with the plugs on them, the electrical plugs that go out all the way now that didn't used to. Why you not go in like your brother? 
There you go. And this one goes over the top. Tuck the plug part underneath. This is not the easiest intuitive way to get this to go in. But when it comes time to put it in the bracket and you want this to work and not get cracked, you want to do it the right way, right? Right, okay. I'm glad we have an accord. Why is he talking about Hondas? Gosh. Alright, so down in there. Accord just means to agree. For those of you that English is a second language. I put that in the wrong one. Nope. Yep, I did. Alright, so this has to go. Why well, I have to think about this a lot every time I do these. So go underneath that guy, clear to the end, stick it in. And if I look like I'm struggling, it's because I am. I've done quite a few of these, but they just, I don't know. You have to use a tubing that is hard enough to be able to take the pressure but still be able to bend, you know, and be thin enough. It's just kind of one of those paradoxical dinged if you do, dinged if you don't things. Still waiting for DuPont to develop a new heat shrink fuel tube line that uh, works great for this application, but it's kind of futile because they don't do spider injection anymore. It was such a pain in the butt. I had to redesign it every year. That it just got to the point where they're just like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do normal multi-port fuel injection. Now I've done a beautiful job on this. It's just crap. <laughs> but uh, that's how it goes. I'm double checking. I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any cylinder misfires. I have to do this again. I make sure that my end ones are to the ends and the inner ones to the inner and my fuel lines are on the right side. And they all are. And so as I start to push this down, this is where you start to be happy that you did it that way. And that's a pain. If this isn't heated up or if it's really cold outside and you're doing it outside, you're just going to snap and break and kink these if you don't use a drop light and heat them up a little bit. And working around fuel, of course. Make sure you got a fire extinguisher. Make sure your negative cables disconnected on your battery. I hope that somebody would watch this all the way through before attempting, but you never know. Alright, so I was wiggling that down in there. And this makes the bend uniform all the way around the whole line. And uh, clack, we're in. So the hard part's done. Double check, you know, do a little twist and wiggle. Don't break or kink anything. You know, you've gone so far, don't screw it up now. But uh, make sure that these are all seated in there properly so that they can get a good spray down the uh, correct cylinder hole. Awesome. And uh, that's how you get your injector in. And installation is reverse of assembly. Just make sure when you put the uh, upper intake manifold gasket back on, might as well clean your throttle body. This one's absolutely disgusting because it's been running too rich for so long. Look at that. So we're going to clean that out and we're going to replace this gasket. Just take your little dental pick, stick it in. I just use this as a reference. I used to work for with this gasket and uh, yeah, just call them up and see if I'm a good employee. No, that, not that kind of reference, just like orientation to see top, bottom, left, right. To take that, throw it away. Your new injector has the gasket for this on. It's that blue color. So you don't have to worry about that, but you do want to replace the gasket that goes in here and then maybe the other one that's there. So I'll go ahead and do that and put it together. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more like it, click subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, put them in the comments below. And uh, as always, go forth and be awesome. So everything's all assembled. We've got the new spider injector in there. You only see a little bit of the black of it. Um, I've got all my lines tightened, secured. Everything's plugged in, ready to rock. So we want to pressurize the fuel system, check for leaks, because the fuel rail, hear the pump kick on, 
The fuel rail is just right underneath of those spark plug wires. And if the spark plug wires are bad or it squirts gas on those, you could have a fire on your hands. So you want to double check, make sure everything's good with that. And then when you're convinced that things are okay, go ahead and uh, fire it up. If you forget to plug something in, your check engine light will come on on your dash and help give you a clue as to what you forgot to plug in. Or if you hear a big uh, hissing noise, you'll know you've got a vacuum leak. I'm going to pull this one outside of the shop so I don't carbon monoxide myself and I'll just give it another look over. Typically before I finish a job, I'll go back over and see if there's anything like this uh, that I forgot to put in and uh, spend a good 30 seconds, maybe longer and just double check everything because it's difficult like i say say you undo 50 things it's hard to get all 50 out of 50 just based on human memory there's a lot of opportunity for error so you just want to check yourself and create good habits so that uh, you have good results looks like that cap is toast we'll have to put another one on anyway hope you enjoy the video if you have any questions leave them in the comments below like i say